Welcome to our lecture online. In this set of examples, we're trying to determine whether or not the sequences will converge. And of course, as n becomes very large. And in, we have some special cases here where the bases of the exponents here, for example, are different, or we have different functions, or we have different kind of exponents like that. So how do we deal with that? How do we look at it? Sometimes they're rather deceiving. For example, here, you can see that we have in the numerator 2 to the n plus 2 power and in the denominator 4 to the n power. You may think that because the exponents here are bigger than the exponents down in the denominator that the numerator will grow faster. But that's not the case because the base here is twice the size of this base and as n becomes large the difference between n and n plus 2 becomes very small and the difference in the base begins to take over. For example, Let's say that n equals 1. If n is equal to 1, then we have 2 to the third power divided by 4 to the first power. In this case, this would be a divided by 4, and you can see that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. But when n becomes equal to, let's say, 4, then the numerator becomes 2 to the sixth power, and the denominator becomes 4 to the fourth power. So the numerator will be 2 to the 6th power, which is 64, and the denominator will be 256. And you can see then, as n becomes large, the numerator becomes much smaller relative to the denominator, and then you can see that in the end, as n becomes very large, the sequence will converge, and it will converge to the value of 0. In the second example, we have a cosine function in the numerator and the square root of n in the denominator. And of course, the square root tends to make a number smaller. But as n becomes very large, the square root of a very large number is still large. And in the numerator, we have a function that will vary in value between 1 and negative 1, never become larger than 1, never become smaller than negative 1. So the numerator stays relatively fixed between a very narrow range of values. The denominator, as n becomes large, will continue to grow. And eventually, you can see that the function will start like this and converge into a smaller and smaller number and eventually you can see that yes this will converge and it will converge to the value zero. On the third example it becomes very confusing. We know that the natural log of a number is not very large but if we keep squaring a number that gets larger and larger and becomes larger will that be larger than the value of n itself? Again we can try some do some trial and error Let's call n equals 10. When n equals 10, what happens? And of course, for this, I will need a calculator. We take the natural log of 10, and then we square that number, so the numerator becomes 5.3, and the denominator is 10. So you can see that even when a relatively small value for n, the numerator is already smaller than the denominator. Let n equals 1,000. When n is 1,000, you take the natural log of 1,000, you square that number, and you get 47.7. Let's say that's about 48, divided by 1,000. Now notice that the numerator is less than 5% the value of the denominator, where here was more than 50%. So you can see that the ratio, as n becomes larger and larger, becomes smaller and smaller. And you can see that in the end, yes, the sequence will converge, and it will converge to the value 0 as n approaches infinity. And then here in the last example, it's very similar to the example we have over here. Even though we're squaring the sine of n, again, the square of n means that the value will be between 0 and 1 regardless of the value of n, and the denominator just keeps on getting larger. And so therefore, we know that for large values of n, this will converge, and it will converge to 0 because, again, you can see that the sine squared of n will do something like this. And of course, if we divide it by n, these will become smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, you'll see that it will converge to zero as well. So sometimes they try to fool you. They give you examples where the numerator appears to be bigger than the denominator. But if you trial, do some trial and error and plug in some values, you can see that the trend will then typically converge. And typically converts to zero. And that's how it's done.